Hello! So, it's been quite some time since the last video I made and um, I'm quite busy with other projects but I thought it would be interesting to kind of update some of the topics that I've been touching and learning over the last few months um, and um, I will do a series of videos, not that many, maybe two or three touching very specific topics um, first I would like to talk about um, a JSI module initialization which will be this video um, because basically on all the tutorials that I did um, the way that I did it can fail sometimes and I have learned about a better way to do it so I thought it would be interesting to update it I'm also thinking about doing a video about multi-threading on the C++ side I think that would be really interesting for a lot of uh, functionality and then just a general update regarding a good way to structure C++ code combined with JSI code which might be useful for larger libraries and so on and so forth so um, today I was thinking about talking uh, in initialization uh, in initialization initializing initializing <laughs> um, Today I was thinking about um, talking about how to initialize a JSI module and basically update the information that I gave on the previous videos to have a more consistent or let's say a uh, thread safe way of initializing, initializing a JSI module. So without further ado, I will just jump into the code. Um, so here, for example, I am just going to go into quick SQLite and this is basically on all the tutorials that I have made so far the way that I had initialized the module before. So I was just using a normal React module and here I overrode the setBridge method. And basically here um, I would just save the bridge, I would save the if it's uh, being set up on the main queue and here is the very funny part, right? So here you can see if this bridge instance does not have a runtime object inside of it, I would just return. Now, what does this mean? The problem is that the bridge doesn't necessarily mean that the JavaScript context has been initialized, right? So this method, um, it, even though it works, especially when the application has a fresh start, for example, when you do a hot reload or some some or a fresh or a fast refresh reload, there might be some instance where the JavaScript runtime hasn't been initialized yet, and then I uh, I would just have to return, which would mean that uh, the JSI functions wouldn't be properly initialized. Right, so this led to a problem where some users were complaining that um, sometimes the library would not load or the binding was not found. And to be honest, I didn't have a better idea how to solve this because I'm not super familiar with the internals of React Native. So basically, um, thanks to Mark from uh, Margello, I learned about a better way to do this. And uh, how can I show you this? I am just going to go into the next checkout that I did and um, I'll just go over the code for a little bit. So basically the module is still there, right? That hasn't changed. We still use a normal native module, but now instead of kind of hijacking the set bridge method, I am just creating a blocking synchronous method Right, so in theory, or well, not in theory, practically these methods are fairly slow, right? This is kind of the old, old bridge, so to say. This is just a normal method. And um, what basically it does, it will block the JavaScript context, it will block the React rendering while this method is being executed. So there is a little bit of a downside to this, but to be honest, it's so small that it doesn't really matter in any case. But what it does allow us is to call this method safely from the JavaScript context, from your JavaScript code, um, which allows to properly 
install the JSI bindings. So first, I'm just going to do a very simple log because I don't I don't need care too much about. I I mean I just need to know that the method is being called. And then I'm going to do something similar to the one before, right? So I'm just going to get the bridge. Um, so since this is a method inside of uh, our React module, this is just Objective-C code. Um, there's an instance in here of the RCT bridge, and I'm going to get the bridge. And I mean, uh, here there's still the node check needs to be here, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything in and out of itself, right? Uh, if the bridge is not there or the runtime is not there, then your application is probably not working, right? So these are just here in case something is not properly initialized. But this, this being a blocking method that you call from the JavaScript context, this should be working like really something is really wrong if these instances are not there. And then uh, it's pretty much the same thing. I just get access to the runtime from the bridge object and the JS call invoker. Oh yeah, this is also a video that I wanted to do a video about the JS call invoker, but I can do it uh, later. Um, so yeah, now that I have the runtime, I would just call the install of my JSI bindings with all the, all the parameters and then that's it. So. Now let's take a look into the TypeScript code that will actually install this method. So I will, at the beginning of the module, right? I import native modules from React Native and I'm just going to do a check for the global installation. Um, so let me just go over parts and let me just show you and this has changed as well a little bit so basically you know here are all my jsi methods you know they are created from host functions and, and so on and so forth and i think there is some misunderstanding from people uh, especially users who just use the jsi libraries which i think they assume that we just put objects wherever we want. And that's not really the case. Um, from the C++ code, you only have access to the global object and there you set your properties. So, you know, people complain and they're like, I don't want to have a global binding. I want to do import, blah, blah, blah. This is just syntactic sugar, really. It makes no difference to you. Sure, it might be a little bit awkward and you want to keep idiomatic JavaScript, but at the end of the day, we're not doing anything fancy, right? So basically I just do on the global object, I do a check if to see if my uh, object with all my JSI methods is already there. And uh, if it's not there, then um, I can throw... So first I need to get the, mod the module, right? From the native modules. If it's not there, then this means this binding is not there and then really i need to fail i need to throw an exception so the application doesn't start um, then i also need to check if my install method which is the one i created here is there um, this is also yeah native called sync hook um, these two need to be in there in order for me to install my module. If it, they are not there, then I would just uh, throw an exception. And then here is what I meant. From the JavaScript context, I'm calling my install function. And this is what actually gives me the thread safety, right? So unlike the previous implementation where on the set bridge method, this was called on the native side and the JavaScript context might not be initialized, the fact that I'm calling my install method from JavaScript itself already kind of protects me from any threat raising conditions. So here I can just call install and I would just check the value of my uh, install operation, right? So if it's not true, then it means something, something went wrong. My JSI bindings are not installed. Um, and uh, I check again 
if my proxy object has properly been installed, if it's not there, again, I throw an error. And then here's what I meant for the people who are sticklers to the JavaScript uh, way of doing things. I would just put this global binding into a proxy object and I just do a normal export, right? So, yeah, <laughs> it kind of bothers me a little bit that sometimes people are not able to solve these kind of problems on their own, but fine, it's just synthetic sugar. Uh, it's now exported, right? So uh, from your application code, now you can do import, right? So I'm just importing the object that I define on my index. I could as well avoid this. And instead of doing that, I would just call global SQL live proxy open, and this will work just fine. I mean, here's the right now a type difference, a type problem, but doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that's the proper way to install a JSI C++ module without turbo modules, of course. Turbo modules already take care of this for you, like safely initializing your module and so on and so on and whatnot. Um, but turbo modules do have some limitation right now. Uh, if you're doing a pure C++ implementation and you want to have complete control over your JSI method, then you need to install your bindings yourself. And this is a thread, thread safe way to do that. Um, in case you haven't seen it before, uh, let's just go over the Android version of this because it's also somewhat similar. Um, the Android version looks like this. I have my, again, native module, like normal old school React Native module. Um, there's some blah, blah, blah code, we know some uh, scaffolding code in here. And basically the same thing happens. I just expose a blocking synchronous method, right? So an install method. And here I basically just uh, call my or load my C++ binding and call the install function internally. Uh, I, again, I return true or false, etc., etc. right? So this is pretty much all cover territory on the previous videos on how to initialize a JSA module. Not going to go too much in detail over it, but now both Android and iOS depend on this JavaScript method. And this gives you some, some uh, runtime safety. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope you learned a couple of things. Um, this is really useful for not only initializing your JSA module, it can be useful for I don't know, whatever synchronous expose, exposing of methods you want to do. I mean, you can also do here not only calling an uh, install function from C++, you can also, for example, create a host object or something like that and expose it in a thread safe manner to the JavaScript context. Um, on the next videos, I will probably cover uh, threads, multi-threading on C++, host objects, I think I didn't cover in the tutorial because I didn't know about them. Um, what else would be interesting? I'm not really sure at the moment. But um, yeah, I will cover some of these more niche topics uh, as the community is now moving on to making their own JSI modules. I think it's valuable. So take care. And uh, remember, I'm available for freelancing. So if you need something, let me know.